Pastor Carl, you talk about some of the revelations that's buried uh, deep in the Word that you have been able to uncover and share in the book. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Several, you, several of them. Can you answer yeah, that Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of them I'd just like to tie a bow on that I was already talking about is the is when you read this, I have it where Mary and Joseph are becoming aware that there are literal specific scriptures that were lying there for several thousand years that were about not their people or not their times. They were about them, Mary and Joseph. You know the Bible, you know they had to, they had to know that because the first page of the New Testament opens by saying, this is what fulfilled the prophet Isaiah said, which means by then when Matthew wrote that, he and Mary were already good friends. J Jesus was already resurrected. So they had to be sitting around talking about this stuff. And, and so can you imagine, can you imagine that happening? All right. Also, a couple of other things I reveal uh, where the Bible says and kind of how it all came together, where Jesus was really born. Yes, he was really born in Bethlehem. But he was also born in a very specific place that had a specific reason, a specific duty, and was tied to specific people. The shepherds were not just regular shepherds. They were temple shepherds. They were priestly shepherds. And archaeologists and, and even, you know, m modern Orthodox Jews, they know this. Um, the scriptures speak of it. Uh, the classical scholars wrote about it. And say the classical understanding of the Word of God has just disappeared from the church. Now so much of it is just fluff and feel good. And, you know, Jesus loves you and that's all you need to know. But there, you got to know everything else. So, but the bottom line is, you, 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 I take you to the scriptures where, where you, you see where it's written that he would be born, he would come from and be presented and would be born in Bethlehem, but also at a place called uh, the Tower of the Flock, Migdaler in, in, in Hebrew. And, and then I tie that together and I show you how that more than likely happened that they wound up there. And then the temple uh, the priests, the, 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 the priestly shepherds, their responsibility was to take those little lambs up to the temple back and forth every day for the sacrifices. Okay? So anyway, I show all of that, and I just put you in the story so that you feel it. You're there. You get it. You understand it. Bethlehem to Jerusalem and the temple was not that far. And if five or six miles, you walk it in a couple of hours, and they had wagons and carts and took, you know, so they were back and forth up and down the interstate yeah. every, every day <laughs> That's right. with their trucks shipping the goods mm -hmm. and then the supply chain staying open. And uh, so all of that, so all, all of that, you're just on that journey. This is what I'm saying. You might read this, you might get there and say, Jesus wasn't born in a, in, in a cave somewhere. I mean, Carl, you're saying this. No, the Bible says he was born in a, in a cave somewhere. The Bible doesn't say that. No, doesn't. In fact, That's I take right. you to the scripture where you what do. the Bible does say. It's amazing. And, and, then, yes. and then you follow the footnote and you go to the back and you read what the scholars have said, the archaeologists have said, uh -huh. the classic scholars have yeah. said, modern uh -huh. scholars are saying, no. It was more than likely right there. Wow. So anyway, that's one of them. And the other thing is the place of the crucifixion. Mm. Um, that's an, uh, an amazing revelation. And um, so Golgotha and what that means. And did you want to hint? And you, yeah. yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I okay. Hint. Well, yeah. Because we uh, only have a few minutes left. Okay. Well, I, I, I will do this. And, and I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, well, you know, Messiah Rabbi Zef Pratt's a good, yes. good friend of mine, and y'all's too. We and, love and, him. Yeah, and uh, and he's written a new book that's going to come out too that goes into detail of of all of this. But mine is in story form, and you just take him there, and I just say these things, and people say what, and then they follow the notes, and I got a lot of the same notes that he and I have shared on this. And but the bottom line is, more than likely, I mean, 95, 98 percent chance. The crucifixion was on the Mount of Olives. And the reason, the New Testament, have you ever thought about this? And I, I, I show you in the book. It only, place, only thing that it says in the Gospels is he was taken to a place called the place of the skull, Golgotha. Okay? And then there's a Greek word that's Golgotha that, that, that means like a, a, a skull, place of the skull. But the Hebrew, it comes from Hebrew. And, and the Hebrew words mean something else. And let me explain. That's all it says. Why is that all it said? Because they were writing to people who lived during that time who knew where it was. 
See, we're the ones 2,000 years later. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have said he was taken to a place called Golgotha. Now, here's where that was, and here's why it's called that. And they didn't say any of that. Why? Because everybody knew. It was a very well-known place. Well, what was it? Watch this. Take you on a quick journey. You go all the way back. You go all the way back, and the uh, people laughed when I said "quick." Did that that hurt my feelings? That hurt my feelings. Do you, do you ever say that? And people laugh at you. I'm just going. They do. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So we you're a preacher. You're the only one that feels my pain. Yeah. I know. Everybody else, they're still laughing. See. All right, but watch. Quick story. I'm going to take you on a journey. Watch. You go all the way back in the Old Testament. I don't remember books and chapters right now. They're all in my book, but I promise you this is true. You go all the way back in the Old Testament, and you wind up with a young man named David, who's not a king yet. He's still a shepherd boy, but he winds up battling this giant, Goliath. Okay? Goliath. Goliath. Now, follow me. And the Bible says, everybody, you know, most people say, yeah, how did he kill Goliath? With, he, with a slingshot? No, that's how he knocked him down. How did he kill him? He took his sword and cut off the head of Goliath. It gets better than that, though. The scriptures also say later on that he took his head and his armor to Jerusalem. Didn't say where. But then later, when David is running from Saul, he goes to Jerusalem up onto the Mount of Olives where there is an altar, one of the oldest, probably the oldest altar that the Jews had for worship of Yahweh recorded in scriptures and probably in history was on the Mount of Olives. He goes up there and there's priests, the priests of Nob. And David, that's where he gets the bread for he and his companions, which David would later chastise the Pharisees about, don't you remember when David went up and got the bread? Okay, that was the altar. All right, now watch. And he asks the priest, do you have a sword here? Something, Saul is after me, I need it. And he says, I've got the sword of Goliath that you brought here. Are you following me? We're following you. Now, if he took the sword and the armor up there and the priest still had it, guess what else he took up there? Oh, yeah, of course. Now watch. Hmm. Why would he do that? Because he's sacrificing it to the Lord. It's an offering to the Lord. You allowed me to kill this giant. You allowed me to deliver my people. Now I'm taking his head and his armor, which he thought, they thought, this big man, well, I'll take his head off. Uh, he can't drag the whole body up there. And then all this armor, he was indefeatable, but you slew him through me. So he takes, him, takes all that up there. That's in Jerusalem, by the way. It's, it's a golf ball's hit from the Temple Mount to the Mount of Olives. And so then, then all those years later, when it says they took Jesus to the place Golgotha in Hebrew is the place of the head of Goliath. Golgotha. That's where they took him. Everybody knew where that was. Everybody. Then you get to the book of Hebrews, and the book of Hebrews says about they took him outside the city to an altar that even the priests don't have a right to eat of. And some of the commentators would look at that and say, well, they must be talking about the cross. You know, that was the altar. No, 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 no. It was the offer of the sacrifice of the red heifer. You can get on the Internet right now and check it out. The bridge to the altar of the red heifer was a bridge that was built over the Kidron Valley that came out of the temple and it went over to the Mount of Olives where the red heifer was sacrificed. For, and that red heifer had to be consumed and you took the ashes because it purified people's sin. And, and Jesus is up there being crucified. And there's another scripture in the Old Testament where David, you'll remember this, when, when he was running from his son Absalom, he's weeping and he goes up the Mount of Olives, up a trail weeping. And all the people came out of the city and went up with him weeping. It's a picture, again, of Jesus, like Psalm 22. He said, they've pierced my hands and my feet. And David was living out a picture there. He was living it out when he went up there weeping with the town following him.